Welcome to Education Today. I'm Gabby Cravener of Catanning High School in the Armstrong School District. Here at Education Today, our goal is to showcase the teachers and students as well as our school district. Tonight, we are going to cover another recently awarded grant in the school district. These grants are made possible through the ASD Foundation and each month the Foundation accepts grant applications from any faculty or staff member who works in the Armstrong School District. Teachers are dealt with the challenging task of ensuring that every student they have reaches a certain proficiency level in each discipline. Tonight's grant was written to aid in that effort. We have two guests with us to talk about this grant. Welcome to Education Today. Thank you. Thank you. Would you please introduce yourselves and your current roles with the district? My name is Miss Jamie Douglas and I work as an inclusion teacher in Science 9 and Biology. I'm Janelle Kodak. I teach Science 9 and Biology. What is the name of your grant and when was it awarded to you? The grant we wrote uh, is called Keystone Success, A Click Away, and we received it um, at the beginning of the school year. What kind of grant did you apply for and what students were or are impacted by it? We applied for the $2,000 um, classroom-wide grant, um, or grade-wide grant, um, and basically all students are impacted by it. Um, the grant allowed us to buy student response systems, um, which allows students to have greater participation. Could you tell us a little bit about the grant that you wrote? Um, essentially, we purchased uh, 48 of these student response devices one teacher, um, it's kind of like an iPad, I guess, in which we, you know, are able to communicate between them. Um, and we got some programs that we're able to, like, write test questions and things. Uh, basically, it helps increase student uh, participation and we're able to monitor their performance. Yeah, it, it provides us with immediate feedback so that we can understand who may be not paying attention or who may be just struggling with the concepts so that way we can go and then help those students who um, may not have understand the instruction that we just delivered. So it's immediate feedback. How did you come up with this idea? It's a good question. <laughs> um, I think for me, um, in thinking about a grant that would write, I had heard about clickers before. Um, actually, we had used um, older clickers that didn't work with newer programs like Study Island. So we wanted to kind of update the technology in our school. Uh, so that's why we chose to follow that. And then before applying for the grant, uh, we did some research about the effectiveness of student response systems, just to make sure that they were worth the money that our district would be paying or the foundation would be paying for them. Did or does this grant cover only your classes or do multiple grades and teachers take advantage of these as well? At this time, um, only our classes are using them. We only have a set number of the devices and a set number of the programs that run. So uh, w basically we use them every day and we use them four periods a day. Uh, but they would be available if we could figure out a way to link other teachers to them. You know, the periods that we're not using them, they would be available. Mm -hmm. How did the students react to this grant? Um, students really loved the grant. They seemed very excited about using the clickers and responding in that way. I think that it definitely decreased some of the social intimidation of saying the wrong answer. And it also um, was nice for them to know what the right answer was right away. So if they made a mistake, they could assess their own learning or their own learning process and then make some changes and do better the next time. So one thing that they really like is they take their tests on them and they get mm -hmm. their test score at the end of the period. As soon as they're done with the last question, they come up and their score's already ready for them. So there's no wait time or stress or nervousness. You have to sleep on it. They get them right before they leave. So they yeah. like that. And it's nice for teachers too because um, it's less, you know, handwork and mental work grading papers. So um, that's something that kind of we value about the, the grant that we wrote. Um, and I think that they also like it too for the reasons that um, Janelle said. They get their responses right away and they don't have to wait. So the kids will actually ask, like, are we going to use the clickers on the upcoming test? So I can tell that they're pretty um, into them. Have you noticed a difference in the students' learning as far as picking up concepts more quickly or things related to that? There's definitely an increase in participation. You know, everybody's engaged because we can tell right away if we have 22 kids in the class, we wait on 22 answers. So 
there's not a time period in which someone's you know not engaged um, I think that as far as them picking up on concepts more quickly what it allows um, them to do is basically um, be more accountable for themselves. Um, I think that it's easy um, after a 43 minute class period to maybe start daydreaming or uh, doodling or something like that. And so I think with the clickers, uh, they know that whatever instruction we're doing, they're going to receive a clicker question on it within a minute or two. So I think it just helps them keep on track. So I do think it improves their ability to um, grasp concepts just because they're more focused on the instructional time you know that they're receiving. How was the grant writing process like? Or what was the grant writing process like? Have you done anything like this before? Um, there was a lot of research involved in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say that was pretty common to you know things that we've written before. You have to kind of take a look and see you know why we would want to do this. Um, as far as the writing goes, you know it was pretty easy between yeah. the two of us. We you know we checked in with Mrs. Atwood you know to get some of the ideas as far as. Um, the Keystone stuff, and Dr. Zukowski also gave us some feedback. Um, so it, was, it wasn't a bad process. No, I would definitely recommend that teachers take advantage of, you know, the grant writing process and, you know, an effort to get technology or um, other classroom resources that they would want. What was or is the biggest benefit to having this grant awarded and instituted into your classes? I think it, it definitely changed the way, you know, we've been teaching this year and um, has given us a lot more valuable data to take a look at. Um, and we, we're being a lot more preventative. Uh, if we know that a kid, you know, maybe it's a few days before a test and he or she's consistently not scored well, gives us an opportunity to kind of reach out to them prior to, you know, an exam grade where it's kind of too late at that point. Yeah, so we can offer them tutoring or if they have a study hall during the day, they can come and see us so we can kind of try to clear up some of the concepts they may be um, a little fuzzy on. I also think that um, us receiving that feedback right away allows us to know whether we're teaching effectively or not. So if the majority of students don't understand what it is that we're doing, then maybe we as teachers need to change our teaching style or the method that we're trying to get across the concepts with. Okay, thank you very much. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with Armstrong School District's Education Today. Stick around. These lights are hot as fire. <laughs> <laughs> Success. We see it every day. Hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes, internationally known faculty who are committed to your success. Real world experiences to guide you on your career and life path, an alumni network 120,000 strong. I'm IUP President Mike Driscoll. Visit us. Find your success at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. I'm Indiana County Sheriff Bob Fiock. We're all proud of Indiana County, but we must be worried about the negative growth of drugs and alcohol abuse. It is the responsibility of all of us, parents, teachers, and community leaders, to provide the best possible education to our youth in the prevention of drug and alcohol abuse. The law is a deterrent, but education is still our best protection. Help keep Indiana safe and drug free. For more information on how to talk to your kids about drugs and alcohol, go to the AboveTheInfluence.com, brought to you by the Armstrong, Indiana Drug-Free Communities Coalition. It's hard to explain. It just became home. There are hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes and faculty that really get to know you. Amazing internships and everywhere programs that help to find a job that is right for you. It's what IUP is about, a commitment to your success. See it for yourself. Visit us, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. Vince McCurry, Executive Director of The Open Door. Worried, scared, confused, not sure where to turn for help? The Open Door. A behavioral health organization has a full range of addiction counseling services 
and mental health crisis intervention services which may be able to help. Call 724-465-2605 or 1-877-333-2470. The Open Door, Steps Towards Hope, Courage, and Recovery. Brought to you by the Armstrong Indiana Drug-Free Communities Coalition. We're back with Armstrong School District's Education Today. We're talking about grants awarded through the ASD Foundation. Tonight's grant is one that helped purchase supplies to aid in the learning of students as they prepare for the annual Keystone exams. Could you give us a little more detail into what exactly the Keystones are and why they are so important? Keystones are a Pennsylvania-based standardized test in which our students have to reach a level of proficiency in order to graduate. What are the base scores students must achieve and how difficult is it to obtain those scores? For our classroom, we would like students to um, score 70% to be proficient. Um, we're holding them to that standard so that um, the keystones are maybe a little more feasible for them. Um, how difficult is it for them to obtain those scores, you think? Um, well, to be honest, I'm not sure that we know yet. Uh, this is kind of our first round at it. And They've taken a CDT, which is kind of like a predictor. a predictor for how well they're going to do. And we're halfway through the content right now. And I would say most of our kids are about where they need to be. Hopefully that'll continue for when we take the Keystones in May. And we hope for the best. What is the next step for both students who pass and ones who have not reached the set proficiency level? Students who pass will simply move on to their next level of science and also they'll be eligible for graduation. Um, for students who don't reach the set proficiency level that the Keystones have, um, they'll have to receive some type of remedial course or um, some type of remedial tutoring through our district. What were or are your goals with this grant? Our goals are to have all our kids be proficient. I mean, that would be ideal, 100% of them to pass and, and move on. Um, we're hoping to get as close to that as possible. In addition to that, um, while the Keystones are super important for the students who are taking them, um, I think one of the goals was simply to be able to monitor progress. Um, that's really important just to know whether students are understanding the ways that we're teaching them. Is this a sustainable grant or will additional funding be needed, this, needed each year? We're hoping that these hold up. Um, you know, they run out of batteries and simple things like that that we're able to take care of. But we haven't had any major problems with the software or anything. I would guess that they probably have a lifespan of, you know, five years or so. So we should be okay for next year anyway. Yeah, eventually with new programs such as Study Island or things like that, we may have to um, write an additional grant to update our clickers so that they work with the programs and the technology that our district ends up having in the future. What STEM-related objectives does this grant incorporate, if any, and how do these affect students? Uh, definitely it has helped us increase technology in the classroom. I mm -hmm. think that's probably the biggest. Um, the fact that every, every student has access to their own device and they don't have to share with anybody else really, I think, has been a big benefit for us in, you know, to implement STEM mm -hmm. into our class. Was there any kind of research or work that students needed to complete to work through this grant? Nope, there was no research on their part. Um, we just basically had to go through the process and explain them how the clickers work and what the buttons did, but they didn't have to do any major research to complete they the grant. They picked it up really easy. Mm -hmm. they, they teach us more often than not. You know, They're something. very user friendly. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. If it weren't for this grant, how difficult would it have been to obtain the, the desired materials? Probably impossible. We wouldn't have. We wouldn't have. We wouldn't have the budget money to pay for the things that are needed in the science classroom. Um, you know, in addition to, to um, the technology, because technology tends to be pricey. So, no, the grant was absolutely critical to us um, being able to implement these student response systems. If there is anything else that we may not have covered related to this grant or the process that you'd like to share. Um, one thing that I can think of, um, 
as teachers, we have to do certain um, projects, and one of them is the action research project. And so that has allowed us to keep data on students um, much more efficiently and easily. It's also allowed us, after students take their tests, to look at, especially now that they're taking them with the clickers, to look at how many students missed question number seven. And so then we kind of know um, what to go back and, and go over again with them and how effective it is to do reteaching. Is there anything else either of you would like to add for the benefit of our viewers? I would say if you're a teacher watching, it's definitely worthwhile to write a grant. Um, it didn't take us you know, a whole lot of time, and we've, we've really reaped the benefits from it. And I, and I would recommend um, if teachers think that their students would like the students' response systems um, to look in and do a little bit more research on them and um, see which programs they would maybe like to use with whatever technology and programs are already in their classrooms because they really are um, something that encourages students to be more um, motivated and per uh, basically participate in classroom instruction um, and they actually make um, things like assessing how uh, successful the students are uh, very um, much easier on teachers. Well that's our show for today. I'd like to thank our guests Ms. Janelle Kodak and Ms. Jamie Douglas, both teachers here in the Armstrong School District. Both were involved in the writing of the Keystone Profici Proficiency Grant. Our thanks go out to the TV production students of Catanning High School, led by their teacher, Mr. Josh Miklos. They were our film crew today. Please join us again next week for another look at the Armstrong School District. Visit our website for updated information about the district, and have a great week.